Koban Armani456 was a gaming YouTuber who played through games in order to entertain people, and I'm sure we can all agree that he did have a place in a lot of our childhoods. And as of right now, it's sad to see that he hasn't uploaded since 2018. Now what if I told you that since his departure from YouTube in 2018, he's actually sparked a bit of controversy. In fact, this controversy has actually been quite recent, where it's happened in these past few months. Now this controversy is very serious, and I think we need to bring some light to it. And it's honestly scary that more people don't know about it by now, so I thought I'd go ahead and cover it on the channel. So yeah, grab your popcorn, grab your Nintendo Switch, let's get straight into this. If you don't already know who Koban Armani 456 is, I'll give you a quick run through on what his channel was. Koban Armani 456 started out in early 2010 where he posted his first video about a Sonic Colors trailer. However, just a few months later, he switched over to doing playthroughs. So there isn't really much else I have to say about Koban Armani 456's YouTube. However, he did post these playthroughs for about eight years. Now, Koban's channel had over a million subscribers on YouTube, which meant that he was a fragment of a lot of people's childhood, my early childhood included. So it honestly really sucks to see how terrible of a person he is now. If you haven't already heard, Koban has been exposed for mentally abusing and manipulating somebody who goes by the name of Kate. So Kate actually came out and posted a Twitter post about her experience with Koban. Now this Twitter post actually had a tweet longer link on it where she would go in depth on how Koban actually mentally abused her. Now Koban was extremely excessive towards Kate. He implied that he would stop making content if she didn't talk to him. He would straight up give her money virtually in order to give her messages through those payments. And that's not even the worst part. He would threaten to commit suicide if she did not talk to him. Now, now, if that's not screwed up enough, Kate actually has PTSD because she's a suicide survivor victim and she has lost many people due to suicide. Now, there's no saying that Koban actually knew anything about this PTSD, but still, you should never joke about suicide in that way because you never know what other people have gone through. Now, what I've already mentioned about Koban was just the beginning. This scenario turned into an abusive cycle where Kate would want to leave and then Koban would be like, well, if you leave, I'm committing suicide. Now, Kate eventually determined that enough was enough, so she finally blocked him. This led to him making multiple alternative accounts and order to talk to her. Now again, this became too much for Kate, so she actually got him into therapy. Now I find this part kind of crazy because she's trying to help him in hopes to get him to stop, which is honestly just a caring thing to do. And I just don't understand how she could be that patient enough in order to get him into therapy. Like she's not just completely shitting on Coben, she's actually helping him. Now all this was before she had actually came out publicly. She had threatened to do it, but never actually went through with it. Of course, until earlier this year. Now his harassment just evolved into more and more harassment where he would actually brag about what he did to other women. And that's honestly where it became too much for her. She stated how she shouldn't have to block or change her number in order to get somebody to stop harassing them. So after many, many threats, she finally made her story public. Now after sharing her story, Koban made it very clear to Kate and her friends that he wanted forgiveness. Now I don't know man, I think after just a few years of mental abuse, I don't think it's that easy to get forgiveness. Now you can't exactly do that and just expect forgiveness like instantly. I don't know man, maybe you should have just straight up not harassed her in the first place, like holy shit. Like bro, it takes like two brain cells to know that harassing somebody is not good. Eventually, the messages on the Cash App and the PayPal and the messages to her friends would die out. So it seemed like this was all over, right? Well, we were right, that was until a few weeks ago. That was when Coben decided to release a recording. In this recording, he actually replies to all the drama, but it's quite obvious he needs help and he is not right in the head. I'm just gonna go ahead and play the recording for you. So yeah, there's gonna be a lot of holes in that boat, bitch. And I want the feds to find out. I want the feds to find everything on you. They're gonna find everything on you, Katie. They're gonna find you've been lying and slandering me the whole time. And oh my God, man. Don't you bring the bloodline back, bro. Don't you bring the bloodline back, because damn, bro. Oh, my God. I just, you know, I pray. I pray for my soul, man, because my soul has been wanting to just be like, you know, Stephen Frost, you know, just hit the big red button. You could just drop it like Dr. Eggman Master playing it up like seven years, bro. Ever since a motherfucker tried to take my channel down. Gamer guy, I've been thinking, you know, if someone actually tried to kill me, what would, what, what would I have done? You know? Exhilarating. It's so exhilarating. Oh my god, I want to lose my mind sometimes. Like, oh my god. Bro, did my man do a Sonic reference in this reply recording? It's like, bro, I can't help but address that. Like, what the hell? But on a more serious note, he does mention how Kate could be slandering him and could be releasing false info and false accusing him. And I want to account for the small chance that he could be 100% innocent. But bro, have you heard this man talk? Have you heard the recording? He needs help. He obviously does. So regardless of whether he's innocent, 
innocent or not, he needs mental help. Now, as of very recently, it seems that Kate has filed a police report on Coben, and as of right now, that's all the information we have on him. Of course, I would love to make a follow-up video to this, just because, you know, it's a current case that is still happening. So you guys can definitely expect that in the future if there is anything to come from her police report. But besides that, that's all I really have to say on this subject. What I find stupid personally is that Kate has put in two police reports and Coben is still harassing her. It's the fact that our legal system waits so late in order to help somebody, sometimes when it's too late. Now I want to go ahead and thank Willie and VMEG17 for informing me on the subject. I actually got the audio clip from Willie, so I thought I'd go ahead and thank him. So thank you, man. I'll leave you linked in the description. Now this is where I'm going to end out the video. Now if you've made it to this part of the video, make sure you subscribe with post notifications on because I do have kind of a rough upload schedule, but I do plan to go more and more professional about this YouTube thing as time goes on. So if you guys want to support me along the way, then that would be highly appreciated. But yeah, hopefully you all enjoyed the video. I'll see you all later. Thank you all for watching.